Hey guys, it's Amelia. Not probably just Amelia. So I'm moving out of St. Andrews. This is my final day here. So for those of you who don't know, I did a year-long master's program here at University of St. Andrews in Scotland, and I have received so many questions about life here and what the student life is like, what the dorms are like, all of that. So I thought I would just make a video because um, <laughs> I've received so many questions. <laughs> Uh, feel free to continue asking me questions in the comments, um, would be great. You could also message me on Instagram, I am happy to answer your questions. Uh, hopefully though, I'll answer them all here. I also, I'm going to tag the sections of this video below, so um, please go check those out. Also, I have an entire playlist of uh, like times at St. Andrews, like things that I did, if you want to go watch those vlogs. So they will also be linked below, in the corner, whatever. Let's get into it. I'm specifically talking about master's programs. However, a lot of these things apply to both master's and undergrad situations. Um, I don't really know that much about PhD situation here. So that's what I'm speaking to. I do have friends who are undergrads um, and I am a master's in art history. So it's Emlet art history. So I will also be talking about that specifically towards the end of this video, but I have friends in a lot of different majors and from a lot of different countries. So I will try to be working in uh, things that they've told me as well throughout this video. So step number one, applying to St. Andrews. Uh, if you don't know where it is, it's the University of St. Andrews. It is in Scotland here. Um, it's like about two hours away from Edinburgh by bus or by train. It's pretty much about the same amount of time. And we're on the coast, so we got a really nice little coastal vibe going on, but also it's Scotland, so it's never really warm enough to use the water. <laughs> we also have sort of like a coastal weather system, I would say. So the weather is not like Edinburgh. It really doesn't rain here that much, in my opinion. Uh, it rains like a bit in the fall, quite a bit. And there's some days where it literally like pours all day. But for the most part, I would say it just sort of like drizzles every once in a while. Most days are just cloudy. Today, literally it's just gray clouds and I bet you it's gonna be like this all day. Also, it's very windy here all the time. Um, it's August that I'm filming this video and today I am wearing jeans and a long sleeve shirt and I will be wearing a jacket because it is cold. I pretty much have been wearing sweaters all year round. You don't really need shorts here. That's a different video. Maybe I'll get into that later. Application. I applied online. I applied in, I want to say May of 2022, and I had heard back from them by June. So I heard back in about a month. Um, I don't really recommend doing that because I'm pretty positive they hand out most of their scholarships earlier in the year. So you should probably apply in the fall to hear back. Application wise, I applied online. I'm pretty positive it's free. I think you need like three recommendations from letters from people and then you just write like a, a little essay on why you want to get in honestly i still don't really know how i got in i just sort of applied on a whim i was working in new york city as a graphic designer but i really wanted to live in the uk so i was applying to random postgrad places in the uk don't really know why um, and I applied to St. Andrews just because I had heard of it in a book, I think. I had read about it, like some character was like, oh, I'm applying to St. Andrews. And they were like, oh, wow. And I looked it up and I was like, that's pretty. I'd like to go there. So I randomly applied. I think it was free. I don't remember. And then I got in. And then I realized that like, it's a big deal. Like St. Andrews is like pretty much ranked up there with Oxbridge. So Oxford and Cambridge. I didn't know that. So then I was like, okay, well now I feel like I have to go because that's sort of a big deal that I got in. So here we are. Although I will say, I think my essay was pretty bad. So I still don't know how they got in, like how I got in here. Um, if I remember correctly, I uh, applied to the master's program, which is one year. I think all of the master's programs are one year here. And most of the undergrad ones are four years. There's also like a four year master program you could do as an undergrad. Um, but I had applied to the master's program but then wrote my essay about the undergraduate master's program. <laughs> and then I got an email being like, is this what you meant? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and somehow I got in. So thank God I'm here now. 
it worked out. Once you get in, I will say they really don't give you that much information. There's a very large lack of information in this school in general. I feel like I get too much emails about them coming to flush the water in our dorm, but they never email you about the important things. So here's what I want to say. Right after you get in, you have to accept it within a week, I think it is. And then um, you want to get on like finding a dorm immediately. Uh, the housing problem is really bad here. I'm going to talk about that in a little second. But other things you need to do once you've accepted, I would join the Facebook group and also the WhatsApp group. Um, there's usually one per year and also per like your dorm system. So I'm living in David Russell Apartments, Fife Park. I'm in Monade. Now you get to know where I live because I'm no longer here. But I'm in Monade. Uh, that's a building name. And so I, I joined the DRA group chat and I joined the Facebook group. Um, I don't really use Facebook, so I mostly just use this WhatsApp. And I also followed them on Instagram. I followed all of the St. Andrews pages on Instagram. And that's how you'll find out where all the events are, everything you need to know, that type of stuff. Um, you will get an email about matriculation. You have to matriculate, otherwise they kick you out. So make sure you do that. <laughs> Um, they will email you about it, but it's like one of the days right before school starts, you need to come here um, and go to a certain location and that's where you like do your visa stuff. So you'll get your biometric residence permit card. Um, I'm not going to show you that, but <laughs> it's just like a little ID card that you get when you're studying and living in the UK. So you get that and then they like confirm that you are going to school here. To get a visa, the visa process is a nightmare. It's a mess. I just want to let you know in advance, like prepare yourself. Uh, I used VSF, I think is what it was called, and I hated it, but it, it worked out, I guess. Basically, you have to go to one of the major cities to go do it. Um, you have to apply online, then you have to schedule an appointment. You go to the appointment, you take pictures and scan your fingerprints, and then you leave. And then uh, hopefully about a month and a half later, they send you a notification saying you can come pick up your passport and you go in and you get it and then you're good to go. You could go into the UK. Um, at least that's how it is for me. I'm American, coming to the UK, that's how it works. Topic number two, dorms and housing. There is a housing crisis. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> I think it's pretty common knowledge, but there is. So uh, the dorm situation here sort of sucks. The housing sort of sucks. It's really expensive in St. Andrews. And by really expensive, I mean St. Andrews pricing is about the same as like city pricing. Because it is a posh university, uh, there's the golfing thing is really big right here. And it's like a big tourist town. It's the tiniest town you've ever seen. But the housing is crazy expensive. Please be quiet. I would suggest getting a dorm or housing as fast as possible. I applied to dorms as a backup, but then I didn't end up getting housing because housing is very difficult to find. So I had to stay in the dorms and it was fine. I am sort of glad I stayed here because there's such a community at DRA that I made a lot of friends and I don't think I would have if I was living in a random house somewhere. A problem this year that they had is that there's so many students and there's not enough housing and dorms so that a lot of students had to live in Dundee, which is a town about 30 minutes away by bus. So that sort of sucks. I don't suggest living in Dundee. I don't suggest living in Crail. I suggest trying to live in St. Andrews if you can. Um, Cause if not, your social life is just, it's gonna be rough. Like, you, it's very hard to come to Dundee, or come from Dundee, come from Creil to St. Andrews all the time. It's very difficult. Uh, so I would, if you can, try to live in St. Andrews. I know it's very hard, but that's my suggestion. Um, there's a lot of different housing options. Uh, specifically for postgrads, there's only three or four buildings, I think, that are postgrads. Um, DRA Fife Park is one of those, like, big areas where most of the postgrads are. So most of my my building and a bunch of the other buildings here are postgrads only, um, which I think is very nice because then all your friends are right here. The other building I think is ABH, which is Agnes Blackwater and Powell Hall. There's a lot of postgrads there. I don't like that building. It looks like a cruise ship. That's all I have to say. I would not live there. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm here instead. <laughs> also, I think one of the other ones is called Dean's Court. That's closer to town, better location. I've never been inside, but I know there's videos on YouTube. There's this one girl, I'm gonna link it down below, 
it's from a couple of years ago, but they went into like every single dorm on campus and like filmed random people's dorms. That was one of the main reasons I was concerned about living in DRA because when they went in the DRA one, it was like disgusting in the kitchen. And I will confirm that most of my friends' kitchens are disgusting because you get placed with random strangers and you have to learn how to live with them. Um, most people are not clean. I got really lucky and all my roommates are normal and also clean. So our kitchen is moderately fine and not moldy <laughs> like a lot of my friends. Um, also our bathrooms are pretty all right. Um, so I got really lucky, but I will say that is a major problem here. And I would highly suggest sitting down with your roommates the very first week you guys get here and discussing cleanliness and making a system of who's gonna clean when for the bathrooms and the kitchen. In DRA, we share a kitchen living area and also there's two bathrooms between the five of us. So this is my room. Um, I have a bed that's not a double bed. They say it's a double or a full. Um, it's not, it's slightly smaller. Um, so it's basically like a twin, but like slightly larger. <laughs> and then you have a, a little side table, a desk with a chair, a bookshelf, and then this is the wardrobe and the um, hanging rack for your clothes. So that's and then you have a window that opens like this, which is very annoying. Um, and then you share a bathroom. Um, the bathrooms are fine. Uh, they get really moldy really easily because the air in Scotland is just sort of damp and cold all the time. So the bathrooms and the kitchen get moldy quite often. So you do have to clean them pretty much every week. Um, but it's fine. I will say I sort of hate the way the school deals with dorms. Um, they come into our dorms a lot um, and I don't really know why because you're paying rent and it's like your landlord is coming in every single week to touch stuff. It's weird. Um, they come in, they ring the fire alarm every single Wednesday at 9 a.m. to test them. I hate that. <laughs> they also do a fire alarm test uh, once a semester where they make everyone leave the building and they usually do it at 7 a.m. It sucks. I'm just gonna tell you now. Um, they also come into your apartment once a week to test the water to make sure the water is being used or something like that. I don't really know. They also have someone come into the apartment once a month and check that all your doors are still good because the doors are fire doors so they're really heavy um, and they need to close all the way so if you're propping your door open or you're doing something with the doors or the windows then you could get yelled at um, i haven't had any problems with that uh, the windows also they only open about two inches like they they open what's a good way to, they open like this and so they only open two inches but you can uh break the lock and then fix it afterward before they come so that you could open it all the way um and to get that airflow uh, I live on the first floor, so the ground floor, and I absolutely hate it because um, my window basically faces a parking lot, so I have zero privacy. Also, there's a bunch of like plants right outside my window, so the birds like to sit like right there and wake me up at 8 a.m., but also um, I get bugs. So the very first week that I moved here, I was freaking out because I, I don't really feel safe living on the first floor as a woman. <laughs> I was really nervous someone was gonna break in my window. Maybe that's just my American uh, paranoia. <laughs> um, but I was also really worried about bugs and they were like, oh, don't worry. Like, you're not gonna have a problem. Also, like the UK really doesn't have that many bugs, just like tiny spiders and like little flies. That's a lie. The literal first week I was here, I had a massive spider about this big. I'm not exaggerating. I can show you a picture, but I'm not going to because it would freak you out. Like this big in my room and I had to like call random people until someone came and helped me because I could not do it. Um, and then since then, I bought this like uh, screen that you could buy on Amazon that you like tape onto the window. Um, I asked the DRA people to pay for it or to do something about the bugs and they said no and they also told me I wasn't allowed to install this um, screen but then they haven't said anything yet and they don't know it's there so do it anyway is what I'm gonna say. Another thing uh, you're not allowed to put things on your wall like you're not allowed to use thumbtack or uh, what is it push pins or tape things to your wall 
or anything. Um, everybody does, and I did. You just have to take it down when they do inspections. Another thing, they do inspections every semester. It sucks. Um, basically, they don't want you living here. So your entire apartment has to be absolutely spotless. You can't have any trash in your trash can. Um, all your dishes have to be put away. You basically have to clean it better than what they gave you. Um, it sucks. And a lot of people fail. Uh, famously, my friends failed because they didn't wash under their fridge. <laughs> Which makes me confused. Uh, like, did the inspector move the fridge? I don't know. Uh, they also had to clean their ceiling, apparently. I don't really know. I thought their kitchen looked very clean, but it didn't pass. So they're notoriously very difficult. It's a very stressful time. Um, I had a mental breakdown at that time. It was great. But I emailed the DRA people until they gave up and then they said we passed. So that sucked. I will say if you live in DRA, you're basically on the edge of town. We are a 30 minute walk into town. It sucks. Um, there's about two different paths that you could walk into town. So there's like the main road you could walk along and that's all paved or you could walk along the back side, which goes past the science buildings. So if you're a science major, this is a great place for you because you're like right near classes. But as an art history major, I have to go all the way into town for classes and um, it's, it's very annoying. So I definitely recommend getting a, a bike. Um, I don't really like biking, so I didn't actually use my bike that much. But if you like to bike, I suggest it. <laughs> Uh, there's also the buses that you could take. There's a bus stop literally right outside of DRA, but um, that's pretty expensive and I don't want to pay for that. So I walked pretty much all the time. There's also taxis you could take, but I would say it's probably going to be about five pounds to take a taxi in every day, which is ridiculous. Moving process. Moving into this apartment. Um, I flew from the U.S. to Edinburgh Airport. Edinburgh Airport is about an hour out of Edinburgh and two hours from St. Andrews. Um, the way I did things was I had two luggages and a backpack. So I got to Edinburgh Airport and then I took the bus or the tram, you could take either one, into Edinburgh City. And then I stayed there for a couple days and like hung out and whatever. And then I took the bus, the X-59. Please write this down. The X-59 is the bus that you like. <laughs> And the X-59 takes two hours, but it brings you directly from Edinburgh city center to St. Andrews. Straight. You don't have to get off. You just load your luggage on. You sit on the bus for two hours. You get there. There's another bus called the X-58, um, but that's like a local one. And it stops at like literally every town and it takes three hours. Do not take that bus ever. <laughs> Alternatively, you could take a train. And there's a train that goes uh, from St. Andrews to Lukers, or sorry, from Edinburgh to Lukers. Uh, Lukers is the closest train station to St. Andrews. It's about a 15 minute bus ride away. So that means you'd have to take the train to Lukers and then take a bus to St. Andrews. Um, that's all I have to say. And then once you get into St. Andrews town, uh, you could take another bus to DRA uh, on the same ticket that you have usually, or you could take a taxi um, or you could walk if you're crazy like me. Uh, that was the most miserable day I've ever had. <laughs> I took the three hour bus by accident and then I walked all the way with my luggages to DRA because I'm crazy. <laughs> I don't recommend doing that. If you get Stagecoach, the Stagecoach bus app, um, I really recommend doing that because St. Andrews students get a discount. So if you use your St. Andrews, um, email and then you put in a little thing, you get discounted stagecoach bus tickets. It's very easy. Um, and then you have it on your phone. You could use it multiple times. It's great. <laughs> it's very cheap. Also, if you are under 25, I think it is, you could get a Scott card, which is, or young Scott card, um, which is this little ID card that gives you basically free bus and train fares. But if you're older than 18 or something like that, it just gives you discounted rates, but it's still very good. I recommend doing that. Things that I packed from America that they don't have in the UK. <laughs> this is a very specific thing. This is for my Americans out there. They don't have Cheez-Its here. 
I import my Cheez-Its. Basically, every time someone comes to visit me, I make them bring me boxes of Cheez-Its because they don't have anything like it here and I'm always craving it. They also don't have goldfish. They also do not have mac and cheese. Or they do, but it's bad. So I just want to let you know, um, if you're moving to the UK, that you will not be able to get things like this. They do have this uh, weird store in Edinburgh called the American Candy Store. And it, I think it's a drug front, but they do sell goldfish and other like American snacks. So you can get some things there, but I can't find Cheez-Its anywhere. And the only like equivalent to a Cheez-It here is called a cheddar and they're not very good. So I was also told before I got here that uh, they don't really have a lot of makeup here. So you might want to buy your makeup in bulk before you move here. I don't really use makeup that much, um, but I would just recommend instead of doing that, look up on Boots. Boots.com is the pharmacy here. There's no Sephora here. Um, there's just Boots and Superdrug. So if you look those up online, you could look up your makeup products and see if they have them here before importing everything. Um, I was also told that they don't sell deodorant, um, like stick deodorant, because that's the type that I like to use. And I've been told that mostly in the UK they use like the spray stuff or the rolly ball. I don't really like those. So I brought a bunch of the stick deodorant stuff with me, um, but they do sell that here. So I wish I had looked it up beforehand. <laughs> they just don't have Dove brand. Like they have different brands, basically. Things that you don't need to pack for St. Andrews. First off, I would just like to say shorts, like literally, maybe bring one pair. I've only worn shorts like twice my entire time here. The hottest it ever got is like 20 degrees Celsius, which I think is 86 degrees. It's not that hot here ever. They did have a heat wave like two years ago where it got like 30 degrees, which is like 90 degrees Fahrenheit, but like it really doesn't get that hot here, especially with the wind, you're gonna be fine. I would back pack a bathing suit because we have traditions where you go into the ocean and it's sort of a big deal but i also would say don't pack heels there's a lot of balls and formal events which i'm going to talk about in a bit but you don't need heels really for them a lot of people wear sneakers just because you know you're going to be standing for hours and it's going to be really uncomfortable maybe bring one pair of heels but make sure that the heel is chunky because we have a lot of cobblestones here it just doesn't make sense i'm never wearing heels like no one really wears them here and no one really gets like dressed up to go like clubbing because there's no club here so don't bring clubbing clothes you don't need them <laughs> about st andrews the town so st andrews has literally exactly three streets there is north street market street which is like the main one and then south street and they all point point towards the cathedral then there's the three beaches there's uh, West Sands, which is where they filmed Chariots of Fire. It's a very long beach. Then there's Castle Sand, which is my favorite beach. It's very tiny and it's got a little pool that you could go into. And then there's uh, East Sands, which is uh, where the people go into the ocean for May Dip. If you want to learn about May Dip, I made a video about it. Please go check it out. East Sands is more of like the swimming beach, the beach where people go surfing. I do this in quotes because there's no real waves on East Sands. You'll see. <laughs> East Sands is where the pier is as well for pier walk. I also made videos about that if you'd like to go watch. The best places to eat, in my opinion, is the Criterion, which is a pub, but they have this thing called cry pies that are amazing. They're so good. It's basically like a pie. Um, so you get like steak and ale, chicken chorizo, mac and cheese, but they're delicious, like absolutely amazing. And there's not that much good food here. I'm just gonna say it. I come from like New York City, like amazing food everywhere you go. Here. It's a little different. <laughs> um, I love Criterion. I love the Toasty Shack on East Sands. Really cheap, amazing toasties, really interesting combinations. They have a brie mushroom, balsamic mushroom, rocket, and uh, blackcurrant jam toasty. It's spectacular. It's so good. They also have really good milkshakes. I also really like the Thai place. Uh, the Thai place has keeps changing their name, so I don't really know what to call it, but uh, currently it is right next door to Molly Malone's, but sometimes it's also at the end of Market Street, so <laughs> the Thai place is good. Lastly, I really like Kombini, which is like this little uh, Asian rice bowl place. Uh, it's like Japanese style, but it's owned by a Korean lady, from what I understand, but they're really good. They got like little rice bowls, pretty delicious. The cheapest places to eat in town are the meal deals. So if you go to Tesco's, you could get a meal, which is a sandwich, a drink, and a snack for about three pounds. If you go to Sainsbury's, it's the same. 
the absolute cheapest place to eat is the library. Uh, the main library has a little tiny food store in it where you can get a meal deal for one dollar. It's crazy. One pound and you get a sandwich, a drink, and a snack for one pound. Literally, America could never. <laughs> Some other good cheap places to eat is Pret has a bunch of cheap deals. Same with Greg's and the Rector's Cafes, which are in the Student Union and the Union Cafe, or the Rector's Cafe. So that's what I recommend. Pubs. There's a lot of pubs in town. I would say the best ones are Molly Malone's, which is the Irish pub, or uh, Brew Co. is very fun. They're sort of like a local brewing company, but they have a couple other drinks as well instead of just beer. Most of the other pubs in town are like old men bars. Basically, it's like where all of the old men go after they golf, <laughs> if that makes any sense. They're also like very tiny and pubby. Uh, another notable pub is Eichmann's, is very popular with undergrads. I don't really like it because the bartenders give me weird vibes, but they do have live music sometimes. Molly's also has live music. And then obviously the other one of the big bars is the Union, which is the school run bar, which as an American I find very crazy, but is fun. They have like club nights. I'll talk about that in a second, but it's basically like the student union building where you like hang out during the day it has a bar at night. It has three bars actually. So a lot of undergrads are there. Sorry, my phone died. So now it's going to be a little bit blurrier. I'm filming on my iPad. Um, I think the most commonly asked question has been about the social life and the nightlife here at St. Andrews. To start up, I'm just gonna say there's really not that much nightlife. Like, I don't really know what you're expecting, but we're in a small seaside town. There's not really any clubs. The bars are like fine. Um, the clubs that we do have is the Vic, which is like about the size of my room. Uh, for a dance floor and has a bad DJ. And then there's the Union, which is the school run club bar. Um, also has really bad DJs, but like some of the events they throw are fun. Like they have a Halloween event and whatever. Um, basically, I feel like just go to places that your friends are going, it'll be fun. Um, besides that, most of the nightlife here, I would say is like drinking with your friends in your apartment and going to like house parties. But the main thing is going to balls. So the school throws like a ton of balls. All the different like societies here, the different clubs throw balls. So there's like a Christmas ball, I think the mermaid club throws or something. That one's really fun. There's like the opening ball, the May ball, the welly ball, the DRA ball, the computer science people throw a ball. Like there's balls for everything. So sort of just like keep your ear open be on social media looking to hear about the different balls because they're always happening and it's hard to get tickets for them. Um, they're also very expensive, so don't go to all of them. I wanna say each ball was probably about 50 pounds uh, for a ticket and the money goes to charity, so it's good. And then basically what it is, is you everyone's dressed up really fancy, fancy dresses, but like sneakers. And then uh, there's DJs that are like pretty okay. Um, porta potties to go to the bathroom in, food trucks, sometimes are free, sometimes not, and then really expensive alcohol. <laughs> so basically everyone uh, pre-games really hard. So you go to a party at your friend's house beforehand, you get really, really drunk, and then you go to the ball <laughs> because the drinks are too expensive there. Um, I would say most of the balls start at eight o'clock, but people don't really start going until like 10 or 11 o'clock, and then they end around 2 a.m. But I feel like not that many people make it to 2 a.m. A lot of people get so drunk that they leave early. That's sort of the vibe at St. Andrews is it's a lot of uh, posh children getting really drunk too quick. <laughs> That's just my opinion. Um, being a postgrad, I'm quite a bit older than a lot of the undergrads who are literally 18 years old, which is crazy. But I will say that like me and my postgrad friends would go to all these events and we'd still have a lot of fun. Because if you're going with other postgrads, it's like, it's fine. You're having a good time. None of these are events for undergrads only. Like that's not a thing. Everything is very like open to postgrads and undergrads. Like you can go to anything and be in any club. It's very welcoming. I really liked that. Like I was able to join some societies. I joined like the Korean society and um, what was the other one I did? Oh, and the Kalsak, which is like the Kaylee society. Um, both were really fun. I had a great time. I recommend joining some clubs. There is a club day, like the first week of school. 
I would say it's really important to make friends the very first week. It's called Freshers Week. You look it up online. I made a vlog about it. It's the first week before classes start. Basically, the school throws a bunch of events that you could go to. Um, I think most of them are free or like five pounds. They're not too crazy. Um, but they're all really fun because you get to meet a bunch of new people. Everybody's looking for friends at that point. Um, that's basically where I made all my friends. And then you're set for the rest of the year. So it worked out. Uh, but there's like some events that the school runs and then there's also like other little events just go to all of them basically <laughs> um, It's called freshers because it's technically for like the first years that are coming to the school the 18 year olds to make new friends But like also all the postgrads go and most of the school goes to all these events anyway, so don't feel awkward that you're older um, It's you're still gonna make friends and you'll find people the best balls, in my opinion, are the Christmas Ball, run by the Mermaid Society, which is a theater organization, um, and the Welly Ball. I think we're both really, really fun. I also really wanted to go to the Cow Sock Ball, but they're very exclusive. Um, they're uh, very, uh, how do I put this, homophobic, because <laughs> you have to go in couples of boy-girl couples to do the dances, which very outdated way of thinking. Um, there's also way more girls in the club than there is guys. It's just a mess anyway, but it looks fun because it's like traditional Scottish dancing and I love that. It's very fun. Um, but yeah, Calsock I think has two balls. Most of the clubs have a ball in the fall and a ball in the spring. Um, that's just how it works. I went to a lot of balls. I don't really know if I'd recommend doing that because they are expensive and they're basically all the same thing. <laughs> Um, the DRA ball is also very fun. Even if you don't live in DRA, I would try to get tickets to that ball because it's usually a good one. The other events that I haven't mentioned yet, there's a whole bunch of like big events. Uh, there's this thing called Muscle, muscle Bra Racing, Horse Racing Day, I don't know. Uh, it's like an external event organized by the horse racing people. <laughs> um, and they will bus you all the way to Muscle Bra, which is like right outside of Edinburgh and you watch horse racing all day. It's so much fun, very cool. I don't know anything about horses, but it was very fun. Um, so that's one of the big events. There's also a polo day, which is very cool. And uh, Burns night is also very fun. That is the Robert Burns celebration. Usually a couple different organizations throw a Burns night holiday thing. Uh, it's a holiday here in Scotland where you eat haggis, you read Robert Burns poetry together, um, and do Scottish things. I don't know. It's fun. <laughs> uh, and also St. Andrew's Day, which is in, I want to say, the last week of November, if I'm correct. Uh, it's the holiday that celebrates St. Andrew's, and St. Andrew's Town does a really big festival for it, which is really fun. So I think it starts at like 8pm, maybe? Uh, and they close down the entire street, they have live music, there's a Kaylee in the street, um, and then afterward there's like a procession with fire torches to the beach and then there's fireworks So it's a very fun night. I definitely recommend doing that Kaylee's if you don't know what a Kaylee is, please look it up. Uh, I'll put some links or whatever uh, But it's Scottish dancing uh, It's basically sort of like I would say the closest thing it is in American culture is line dancing But it's really not like that. It's like couple dancing sort of uh, mostly, or there's like circle ones, but they're so much fun. You don't have to be a good dancer to do it. You just have to want to have a good time. Most of the dances are just like spinning and like linking arms and whatnot. It's very simple. You'll pick it up really fast. Please go to a Kaylee. Um, they have Kayleys every Friday and Saturday night at one of the bars in town named Forgans. I don't really like those that much because it's a lot of like beginners. I like the fancier dances better. <laughs> Um, so there's the Kalsock, they do them every week, they teach you Kaylee's, Kaylee dancing, um, but there's a lot of different Kaylee events throughout the year. I would definitely recommend trying to go to some of them. They're just really fun, but, uh, if you're nervous about not knowing the dances, it doesn't matter because before they do every dance, they explain how it works and they usually show you how it works. So you just like watch the people do it and then you just try your best. And it's just about having fun and spinning and like doing a dance. I love Kaylee's. Please go to them. The other thing that I think is very different from American University, uh, I did my undergrad in the US at University of Delaware, so that's what I'm comparing things to. They have societies here, or clubs, whatever you want to call them, 
Um, they all cost money here. So if you want to join any club, you have to pay about five to ten pounds to join the club. And then every time they have an event, you also have to pay for the event. In the US, at my undergrad at least, it was way different. The clubs were usually free, and then the events sometimes costed money, but not really. Um, so that's how the side, clubs work. There's clubs for everything. There's like football, lacrosse, basketball, all different sports. But then there's also like the Kaylee Club, um, the theater club, Korean club, bird watching. I don't know. There's a whole bunch. They're going to have a club day at the beginning of the semester. Go to that, see what's around, sign up for everything. Coursework. This is another one I get a lot of questions about. For the master's program, this is all I could really talk to because I don't really know how the undergrad system works too much here. Um, but for the master's program, from what I understand from my experience and my other friend's experience, um, most of it is very self-study. It's heavily self-study. So we only had a couple of hours of classes a week. Um, I had two classes a semester. Um, both of those classes had, I want to say, two hours a week. So in total, I only had four hours of classes a week. <laughs> so I had a lot of free time, but you don't because you have a lot of, lot of reading, assigned reading um, for art history at least, or homework for my other friends. My friends in computer science had a lot of coding to do all the time. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of like external stuff you need to be doing. It's very, uh, you choose what you want to do. Um, I would also say specifically to art history, you don't choose a specific thing. So my master's degree is literally master's in art history, but I specifically am really interested in medieval things. And I ended up writing my dissertation on cartography in medieval and early modern era. So that's like my specialty, but we don't have specialties here. Furthermore, there's not a lot of classes to take for master's art history in the specialties. I'm lucky because I'm a medieval person and they have a lot of medieval classes because we're in a medieval town. But some of my friends were studying like contemporary Latinx art. There's not a lot of classes for that here. I don't think there's a single contemporary Latinx class. I don't know. Um, so just consider that, I guess. And then I was sort of doing my own research pretty much all year. I just sort of like doing that. So I basically got a head start on my dissertation, which was a good idea. But a lot of my friends didn't, and so they were really freaking out. Because <laughs> the way the post-grad system works is we have two semesters of classes, and then the summer you spend um, working on your dissertation. So you really don't have time during the semester to work on your dissertation too much because you have essays and projects and stuff for class. So semester number one, it's the fall semester. I think it's called Martin Moss semester. I don't really know, <laughs> but it is pretty much from September 12th, like the second week of September to the first week of December is I think when classes end. So the rest of December is just exams, but as a postgrad student, I didn't have any exams. I just had essays. So I left. <laughs> and then the same thing in the spring semester. Classes started the, like the first week of February, I'm pretty positive. And then ended, I think it ended the first week of April, which I thought was really early. And then they have exams through April and May, but I don't have any exams because I'm a postgrad, right? Some postgrads do. I think computer science has exams, um, but most of us just have essays. So it's pretty nice. Then the dissertation, schedule is literally it's different for every single major and every person it's crazy i don't think this is a great way that they do this but whatever for art history we had to write fifteen thousand words um that includes your citations so it's not actually that much um that's a lie it's a lot of words i cried a lot <laughs> um but we really only do it in the summer so basically i think i started writing in May. So from May until August. My dissertation was due August 15th, which was three days ago. I'm done. The other weird thing about the art history program is that, so I choose my supervisor. We had to choose a supervisor and a topic by February, which was sort of early. So you need to be thinking about what you want to do in the fall semester and submit that in January or February. 
um, but you don't have to really start working on it until like the summer. So definitely do some research if you can to figure out like where you want to write your dissertation. Um, so you choose your advisor and then your advisor is only allowed to read one chapter, which sort of sucks because um, they're one of the people that grade your dissertation, so they can't read the whole thing and help you with it because that would be like cheating, sort of. Um, so I was sort of annoyed because they only like read one chapter, which is helpful, but not super helpful. <laughs> All the postgrad programs end in August, so mine was due the 15th, one of my friends was due the 9th, one of my friends was due the 14th, and then some people have to do vivas, which are presentations on your dissertation, um, but everyone is done basically by the 18th of August, and then we have to move out by the 21st, which is Monday. Um, and then we graduate in November, I think November 29th or something like that. So we'll have found out our grades by the end of September. That's sort of the timeline of the school year. I hope this answers all your questions. If I missed anything, please let me know down below. I'll make sure to answer in the comments. I know this was very master's heavy, but a lot of these things do apply to undergrads, I guess, sort of. I might do another video comparing uh, university life in the US versus here in the UK, in Scotland, because I went to uni for four years in my undergrad in Delaware in the US, um, which is very different from here. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something. Bye!